chapter number 6, verses number 66. Boy, I hate to even read them words together. Don't you? <laughs> St. John 6 and 66. And from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Brother Raymond, would you thank God for the reading of the Word? Right here in Scripture, we see there was a lot of people that had attached or fixed themselves to Christ's ministry. In fact, he had just got through feeding the 5,000, and that was 5,000 men. Wasn't counting them women and children, so we don't know how many people was actually following Christ. Amen. We don't know exactly, but it was a lot of people. There was a whole lot of people. And Jesus preached something here a little bit hard. And they must have been falling left and right. <laughs> and sliding off this way and that way. And he turned to his 12 disciples. And he said, will ye go also? Will you also go away? And then Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord... To whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe, we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You know, I can't imagine how many, I, 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 in a way I can imagine, but I can't imagine how many ups and downs the disciples had. I, I don't know how, how much this affected Christ. Things affected Christ. He had burdens just like you and I did. Amen. He just went through all these things without sin. Somebody say amen. But we see here, amen, that, that here is all these people and they, here's the disciples. They're not too far along. This is just St. John chapter number 6. They're not too far along in the beginning of his ministry. And here is all these people, and he, he's fed this 5,000 men, the 12 baskets left over, and here just a little bit before, and, and, and glory to God, here's all these people following, and then he has one little old sermon. <laughs> glory to God. And it gets on them a little bit, and they're nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. Something that I noticed about this is, you know, well, not really noticed it, you know, but Paul said uh, that he had found a rule that when he would do good, evil was always present. And I, I found that, ain't you? Amen. Have you not found that? Amen. That every time you set out to do something good for God, the devil's always present. There's always evil. Present. There's always something fighting against it, isn't it? Amen. Isn't this a pressing way? Y'all don't have to press like I have to press. Amen. Because I'm here to tell you, I have to press every once in a while, don't you? Amen. I have to push. And I have found a rule in my life with Jesus that when someone attaches themselves or affixes themselves to Christ, then the devil begins to try to loose their hold. Have you ever seen that? It seems like every time I turn around, amen, and, and, and you know, we, we see people, 
I love to see people get saved, don't you? I love to see them get on fire for God, don't you? I love to see, see the power of God move, amen? But I'm here to tell you, you and I have an adversary, and his name is the devil, amen? You and I have something every time that you and I try to affix ourselves to God in His ways or attach ourselves to God in His way. We have an adversary, the devil, amen, who's going like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, amen. Is that right? We have that, amen. And I have found a second rule here, amen, that there are few that stay fixed. Could somebody say amen? Amen. I've seen a lot of people attach themselves to Christ. I've seen a lot of people attach themselves to churches, ain't you? Glory to God. But I have seen few people stay fixed or attached to God or the church like they ought to be. Amen. I've seen very few, ain't you? Very few. And that goes right along with the Bible, doesn't it? It really does. It goes right along with it. But I want to take a look at the word fixed. Fixed and attached is basically the same thing, really, when you attach something or you fix something to it, or you fix something to it. And I want to take for just a minute, I want to take a look at the word fixed. And it means to stay in place. It means to firmly fasten. Fixed also means to direct and hold, like fixing your eyes on something. It means to make stiff or rigid, to direct or hold, to decide on, to settle on, and to set definitely. And the last definition is to set right or set in order, or to adjust. And church, today, you and I, amen, I, I don't know about you, but, but praise God, I learned a long time ago, the only way you make it is you've got to attach yourself to God, amen? You've got to fix yourself. You've got to be a fixture, amen? And the word fix means to stay in place. And brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, the one thing you've got to do more than anything else, well, I, not the one thing, I, there's going to be a bunch of them tonight, but glory to God is you you and I today, we have to stay on course with God. Amen. Praise God. I'm here to tell you my Bible tells me in Matthew 7 and 13, enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many be there that go therein. Church, it's easy to go to hell. Somebody say amen. You can go any way you want to. Glory to God and, and go right straight on to hell. Amen. But church, I'm here to tell you today You've got to get on the straight and the narrow path if you're going to go to heaven. Amen. My Bible tells me today, amen, it says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few be there that find it. And church, I'm this thankful. I'm not anything, Brother Keith. I don't know much, but I thank God I knew enough one day to put my faith and trust in the blood that Jesus Christ shed on me. Calvary, and I had enough good sense uh, when he hollered at me like he did Matthew, uh, and he said, follow me. Uh, I'm glad I've been following uh, ever since, aren't you? Uh, I'm glad I fixed myself to his footsteps. Uh, I'm glad today, church, uh, that if you will fix yourself to God. Amen. You'll be a, amen when the things of this world hop up. You know what you'll say? Well, where am I going to go? <laughs> He's got the words uh, of eternal life. Uh, and I am sure uh, that He's the Christ. Uh, He's the Savior. Uh, He's the one above. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Mm. Glory to God. Fixed to stay in place. And you and I have got to stay on that straight and narrow path. Amen. And we've got to stay in the house of God. Amen. Psalms 27 and 4, and so many have forgot that today. They used to know it, but they don't know it no more. 
Psalms 27 and 4, One thing have I desire of the Lord that I will seek after. Church, that's something I got to stay by. I got to seek after God. Amen. If I'll seek him, I'll find him. But glory to God, if I never call on him, if I never look to him, if I never go to him, oh church, I'm not going to stumble across him. I've got to seek him. He said, seek and you shall find. Amen. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. You got to seek after God. Amen. Amen. I, I've never seen a generation in my life. Glory to God. I, I don't know if they pick up their Bible anymore. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You, you can't do this. Glory to God. You come in church and let it go in one ear and out the other. And, mm -hmm, Kentucky fried chicken and everything else going across. Your, you got to seek God if you're going to find him. Lord. Glory to God. You can't worry about what time Madlock starts or glory to God. My friends, if you want to see God, you're on His time. No, you're not, you're not, He's not on yours, you're on His. You're on God's time. we got to seek Him. One thing I desire of the Lord that I will seek after and that I will dwell. That I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Boys, I'm here to tell you, I hope I never lose my desire. I, I hope that the easy chair never looks better to me, glory to God, than the house of the Lord. Amen. I, pray, I hope it never happens. I don't want to be backslidden on my way to hell. As so many people are. I'll just be honest with you. I hope today that I never lose my desire to worship God and to seek after Him and have a desire for His house and His Word and His Spirit and to sing a gospel song. I thought this was all apple pie and ice cream, but I sure was wrong, wasn't I? Oh, I got scripture here. Fixed means to stay in place, and it ought to stay in place. In other words, to uh, stay on the right course, to stay in place is seeking after God, and to stay in place in the house of the Lord. But it also means firmly fastened, as, as a, like an idea of the mind. How many of y'all ever got a hankering for something to eat and it got there in your mind and nothing else was going to do it? You just fixed on it. Somebody say amen. amen. Ain't that right? You was just fixed on it. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. And glory to God, that's one of the definitions. And, and, and I'm here to tell you today, church, your mind has to be fixed. Your mind has to be fixed if you're going to stay attached to the Lord. If you are going to be keep following Him, you've got to have the right mind about you. It's got to be fixed. And the Bible tells us what to fix our mind on. Philippians chapter number 4 and 8, you've heard me read it a million times and probably will read it a million times more because it is so important. Because it's important. Right here is where the battle's fought. Right here is where the battle is fought. Every day. Look what it says. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things. And you've got to have your mind fixed to think the best, to think what's good, to think about the virtuous things of this life. And you say, Brother Jimmy, why is that? I'm going to tell you why it is. Because there's a devil out there. Amen. And he don't want you thinking about the things of God. Amen. And he don't want you to thinking about what's good and what's righteous and what's fire, he don't want you thinking about it. You know what he wants you to think about? He wants you to think about something that's going to make you mad and angry and irritable. Somebody say amen. 
Glory to God. Because what happens when you're thinking about things that make you mad, angry, and irritable? If I want to make my daddy mad, angry, and ir irritable, you know what I mention? Taxes. <laughs> you start about to talk about taxes, and my daddy, there'd be steamroll out of his ears in a few minutes. Amen. Now, I'm just playing. But you know what I'm talking about. He don't like them too much. And, and you know what? The devil, he knows where his stronghold is in you. Just like, I, amen, I know where daddy's stronghold is, as he knows where mine is. When I get to work and ain't paying no attention, he starts to agitate. Somebody say amen. That's right. But that's why it's so important that we're fixed to think the good. Because if we're not fixed to think the good, amen. then what happens is that devil hops up on your shoulder and he starts throwing that fury dart. Amen. amen. And it don't make no difference whether it's the IRS or glory to God, your neighbor, or whatever it is over there. He tries to stir you up amen. and get you mad. Amen. And you say, Brother Jimmy, why is that so bad? Because so is a man thinketh that he is. Somebody say amen. amen. Proverbs 23 and 7, for so as a man is that he for so as a man thinketh that he is. And glory to God, the only way to stay fixed and attached to, and following God as you and I need to is we've got to have a fixed mind to think the best, all that we possibly can. How many of you know this day and time that's hard? Amen. Let me get another leg up here. My balance is beginning to go, so I'm going to have to lean against that. It's hard. It's difficult. Amen. But you and I must do that. If we're going to stay fixed. You see, the devil tries to loosen us by getting our mind on something else. How many of you ever had your mind to do something for the Lord and it wasn't five minutes? The glory to God, your mind was on something else. Amen. Could I hear a more of an amen than that one? Amen. And that wasn't a bad one. Do you really believe that's an accident? I really don't. I think when we would do good, evil is always present. Amen. 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 I think it's hard to stay fixed, to keep your mind on what we need to keep it on. Amen. To stay in the right place with God. I'm telling you, as we go out in this old world... Amen. How hard is it to stay? Tell me. Tell the truth. You, you, you know it's hard to be loving and caring and, and compassionate. And isn't it? Y'all ever have a hard, little bit of a hard time doing that? It can be, can't it? Because what's this world like? It ain't like that too much. Eh? Some of it out there, but it ain't like that. They lie and steal and cheat and do you wrong, cuss you out and everything else. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, praise God, when you're getting the cussing or somebody's lying and cheating and stealing, it's hard to stay in the right place. Somebody say amen. amen. you got to keep your mind where you need to have it. Ain't that right? Amen. Let's just tell it like it is. Ain't that right? Amen. Glory to God. So fixed today. Fixed. Fixed. So many, so... We have to do something to attach ourselves to God. To keep ourselves where we need to be. Amen. Now listen at me. We know that we're saved by faith in the blood. I'm not preaching. Don't, don't think I am. But glory. To, and, and I'm not preaching works. But I'm here to tell you I do not believe. If you turn back out in this world, you're going anywhere. No. But listen at me. You and I have also got to direct and hold. That's the third definition of fixed. Like you direct and fix your eyes upon something and you hold it there. You and I today, glory to God, if we're going to stay fixed on God. Have me y'all ever been following somebody? Y'all ever been following somebody and looked over the road sign and they turned? <laughs> and you went right past the turn. Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me. 
Church, that's the reason you've got to keep your eyes fixed. If you're going to follow the road that Jesus Christ has set out for you, you've got to keep your eyes fixed, direct, and you've got to hold it on to Him. You've got to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You've got to press towards the mark of the high calling that He has called you to be as saints of God. You've got to do it. It's the only way to stay fixed. How many of you know after you follow somebody for so long a period of time, I'm so bad. I drive like this. I do. I look all around. I glance right back and I glance right back. But, but when I'm following somebody, I got to... And it's hard for me to do that. And believe it or not, we have to make a conscious, a conscious effort. A conscious, conscious effort. I know I'm just a poor old dumb country boy. I really am. I try. Lord, this ain't got much to work with, does it? I tell you, but I'm telling you here today, you and I have got the whole, we've got to press towards it more. Look what Proverbs 4 and 25 tells us. Let thine eyes look right on. It's so easy to get our eyes off of what's important and what God would have you to do. Amen. How, how many of y'all just confess that to me right there? You ever have, have, have a little bit of a hard time keeping your eyes on really what's important? Amen. Amen. And the eyelids... Look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet. Boy, I think we all fall short right there, don't we? There's two ways of pondering. After we've took a step, looking to the Word of God to see whether it was the right one, thinking about it, or before. It's a little easier before. Amen. You say, Brother Jimmy, how do you know that? I've had experience both ways. Amen. Amen. Ponder. Ponder. Ponder the path of thy feet. I used to love to coon hunt. Do you know what the bad thing about coon hunting is? It's nighttime. It's nighttime. And you don't have much prayerful vision because, you know... If you were sophisticated coon hunters like Daddy, you had these coal miner hats, you know, and you had that little light there on top of him. Tony don't know it, but he's got one. He thinks it's a work cap. Somebody say amen. I'm playing. I'm playing, Brother Tony. But the bad thing about it was you couldn't just keep, you couldn't look all around you. You had to keep your head down so you could see where you're stepping so you didn't trip over everything. And then... It never failed because you don't have no peripheral vision this way because the light's shining down. Pap! You get hit in the head four or five times with a great big limb. That poor limb's all I got to say. That's right. And that's it today, church. You and I today, we've got to ponder our path. We've got to keep looking there. It's so easy, it's so easy to take a step and step in the wrong direction and, and God's are going this way with things. You understand that? And for you and I to step this way, isn't it? It's so easy. But fixed also means to make stiff. I didn't read the rest of that. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Now, there's many definitions for the word established, but one of them happens to be fixed. And if you'll ponder your path, your ways will be fixed. They will be established in God. But it also means to make stiff or rigid. 
like a jaw fixed in determination. You know, we sing that song, I am determined to hold out to the end. That's what being fixed is. Being determined today. Joshua, I think, said it best when he stiffened up his back, I believe, amen, and took a st and become rigid and said, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, amen. And church, I believe that's what we've got to do. Because I don't think it's getting any easier as the days go along. Somebody say amen. I don't know if, if the world has really gotten faster or it just has, seems to have gotten faster because I've gotten older. I don't know. I don't know. But fix means to decide on, to settle on, or to set definitively. Whew, I knew I was going to have a hard time with that, but I got it, didn't I? To set something and not change it. That don't work too well with this society. Whatever somebody complains about... Amen. They set out to change it so they'd make him happy so they'll vote for it. You, and what people need to do is, is just go out and set to do that which is right and not change it because it's right. Somebody say amen. amen. Unless you find you're doing wrong. Ain't that right? But I like this verse. Psalms 112 and 7 goes right along with that in my mind. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Boy, that may be really, really, really hit home here in a little bit. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. You know, if you will not change and trust God and keep your heart fixed, you won't be afraid of all these evil tidings of what the world can do to you. And finally, finally, fix means to set right or to set in order or to adjust as you would your hair. Amen. Is that right? The church, that's one thing. To be fixed with God, we have to be adjusted. So that we stay on course. Amen. We have to be things have set in order. Amen. Second Corinthians 13 and 5, and I love this verse. It says, examine yourself. Now, I, I'm here to tell you. The only way that I can really tell how long that is, I can make a guesstimate is if I pull out my rule. And I pull out that rule and it'll tell me right down to the 64th if I got the right rule. 32nd anyway. It'll tell me exactly. And it is how I, have you all ever heard that thing uh, measured twice and cut once? That's what we need to do with God's Word. That's how we check ourselves. That's how we examine ourselves. We put it up there. I'm a few inches short today. I think we'd all have to say that every once in a while. Examine yourselves whether you're in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you except ye be reprobate. How many of you know we know exactly where we are with God? 
From time to time, we don't want nobody else to know who we are with God. Say that a little louder, Keith. That's all amen I got there. It'd be the truth, wouldn't it? Church, if ever a day that we need to make sure that we was ready to stay in the place that we ought to be, if there's ever a day that you and I today need to decide on, settle on, it's going to be God and nothing else. Ever a day that we need to have our mind firmly fastened, that we need to direct our eyes on Jesus and hold it. If there's ever a day that we need to be stiff and rigid and stand up for the cause of Christ, it would be today. If there was ever a day that we need to make those micro adjustments. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I had a 1964 Jeep. And it had a four-cylinder engine on it. When I overhauled that, I'd never seen the inside of an engine. That's the truth. And Daddy can tell you this is true because I carried it into my bedroom. I was a little bit of, I was a little stout in them days. Laid out a towel and worked on it. Mama just fussed. <laughs> but I got that thing overhauled. Took me three months to figure it all out. I draw pictures and take it down to the parts place, and I took the block and got it bored and all that stuff, but I figured it out. I got that thing back together, and the only thing I couldn't find was the hot water to the switch. So I had to run me a war from a battery, and I had a toggle switch underneath there I had to kick, and it started right up. It sure did. It started good, but it wasn't in time. It wouldn't run. It would run, but it wouldn't run. And see, that was for the day that they had a torque wrench. They had that little thing look like a spark plug gap fixer. You know, where you adjust a spark plug? And it was to do the valves. You took this plate off the side and you stuck it in there and then you adjusted this here on top. And for three weeks, for about an hour, I'd adjust on that thing and then throw it over against the garage and go back in the house and kick something. Because I couldn't quite get it right. But I'm here to tell you, without that little adjustment, once I got that little adjustment, everything started running good, and it could just go down the road getting it, and before that, it wouldn't go from here to Linda and die. It's important that we keep ourselves adjusted. If we want to stay on course for God and stay on the long haul for God, we need to keep ourselves finely, tunely adjusted for God. Because if we get out of time and get into our own time instead of God's time, somebody say amen, we ain't going to get nowhere with God. Amen. Well, I don't know whether we'll be back next week or not. To what we was doing. I sat down to do that and this little thought come to my mind so it must have been needed what needed to be done. That's all I know. But I tell you